Hi everyone. I was starting to wonder um, about the constellations because so many of us have um, had dreams about, you know, significant things maybe happening around the time of a Gemini represented by the twins. So um, I wasn't sure that I could necessarily trust the set. Um, times that were provided, you know, from um, uh, the constellation of Gemini occurring between uh, mid-May uh, to mid-June. And I took it on for myself to download Stellarium, and it was really easy to do and to set it up. And um, I'm showing you here the where the sun is, this is a view from Jerusalem, um, and I started with June 8th today, which appears to actually be in the constellation of Taurus, the horns. So it's really just that this time starting to really get to Orion and Auriga, and I'll put some clips of um, what those constellations um, mean in terms of the return of our Lord, um, but it, it's not really showing it enter um, into the constellation of Gemini until actually closer to the 21st of June, which I find very interesting because that's technically when conventional wisdom will tell you um, it ends. So I did some digging about, you know, is it possible that um, as time has passed that, um, you know, stars have moved or the tilt has moved or whatever. And I did actually find something in the Cornell Astronomy site discussing that. As you can see, this article that I found um, it's from actually from a website called Ask an Astronomer um, in the Astronomy Department at Cornell um, University, it says, as the Earth's axis wobbles, and I guess they call this the precession of the equinox, um, the star signs move forward through the year, making a full circle once every 26,000 years which is close to a shift by one sign every 2,000 years. It says the present zodiac was introduced at Roman times at the beginning of the Common Era. Since then, about 2,000 years have passed, and the signs moved forward among the dates by about one sign. So if your official sign is Libra, chances are that the sun was actually in the constellation of Virgo at the time of your birth. So I don't really care about the, the, um, the signs, I care more about the constellation. So that would explain why um, we're not really seeing Gemini constellation, the sun getting to the Gemini constellation um, until you know, towards the end, the 20th, 21st of um, uh, June. So that's interesting. And now I'll play a few short clips um, from the Christian astronomer, Dale Sides, I believe his name is. Um, I'll put the links also, yeah, Dale Sides to his videos. To talk a little bit more about the individual um, decans. Is that of Auriga, and that is the warring shepherd. So this goes together to show the nuances of, of, of Taurus being one coming in judgment with a very strong word and a very highly protective um, nature. That's within the Auriga Decan. Just incidentally, let me share one more thing with you. The fact that Auriga is also called the charioteer, this all has the implications of a charioteer of driving 
you know, to reach a destination. This shows the second coming of the Messiah. So this whole uh, constellation of Taurus is very much about the second coming of Christ. And we'll see that these two constellations next to each other, Taurus and Gemini, are inseparable in that uh, Orion being the first decan in Taurus uh, is inextricably bound with the messages that are in Gemini. So let's move on to the Gemini constellation. And the Gemini means twins in Latin. That's what it means. And it's got the two stars, Castor and Pollux. One means the coming ruler and the other means the coming redeemer. So Gemini is a wide open constellation. It's got a lot of different meanings. Uh, in the Egyptian uh, zodiac, it shows a male and a female, which could typify the coming of the bride for the bridegroom. 